Showtime! Some people believe the moon landing never happened, which is ridiculous because the moon isn't real. Others believe that every new gaming news event will bring us news about Hollow Knight Silksong, which if you didn't know is far more ridiculous than thinking that your artifact is going to dodge the flat defense. Pain. However, there is something even more ridiculous than both of those things combined, and that is the delusional group of people who still think Kaching is a viable meta character. Truthfully, even when we thought she was in the meta, she probably ever wasn't really there to begin with. You see, Kaching already has crippling stamina issues. She's about as bad as a 50-year-old asthmatic chronic smoker. So the last thing she needed was a floor 12 just filled with cryo enemies. Look, I mean Kaching back then. I know the struggles. I know how much it sucked. And it sucks even more now. Let me tell you real quick about Albedo. If you weren't around to have gotten Albedo on his first banner, he sucked shit. If sales were anything to go by, not many people were around to ever experience that. It wasn't pretty. Luckily for Albedo, he was saved from a fate of carrying that cruddy little three-star weapon around for an eternity and given a weapon that was perfectly tailored for him and him alone, at least as we have it right now. And as if that wasn't enough, he also got a fancy new artifact set, which may not have been meant for him, but it works for him. Kaching, on the other hand, has no such future to look forward to. She can already equip the Mist Splitter Reforged, one of the best damn weapons we have in the entire game, even outside of just the sword category. Artifact options may not be anything spectacular, usually just being relegated to double attack, percent or with thundering fury for some ungodly reason you actually went to spend resin in that domain but they are serviceable oh what about constellations you say well to call this sad sack a shit excuse of a constellation tree an actual constellation tree would just be insulting to everyone else who has a real one with the entirety of this dumpster fire adding just a little over 30 percent damage increase and absolutely nothing to increase the fun of her playstyle at all it's uh it's not a bright future for Kaching. And look, a lot of people like to blame it on Electro. Electro is not the problem here. Electro is actually doing pretty well. Kaching is the problem. She is littered with issues, just tons of them. But we can fix that in just 14 easy steps. Quite frankly, even after all these, I don't know if she would still be meta, but she'd be more fun at least. First up, ever so slightly reduce her charge attack cost. You see, Kaching is basically fighting with a mana bar. The bulk of her damage comes from her charge attacks, but unlike a character like Hu Tao, her charge attacks don't do enough damage to warrant the cooldown period of your stamina bar being gone. Nor does things like your elemental burst and your skill usage or adding in your support abilities make up for the stamina loss, not to mention by using all your stamina stamina all the time, you're also not having the stamina to actually dodge attacks. Reducing her stamina cost from 25 to 20 would at least let her get in 12 charge attacks from a full stamina bar, as opposed to the current just under 10. Next up is the distance as she flies backwards when she uses a charge attack. This is a real problem when you're facing enemies who are prone to going flying like small hilly turtles or treasure hoarders, or any enemy like a large vishap who will fly backwards dramatically and cause you to chase them down. Any time or stamina you spend chasing these enemies down because of this distance is a damage loss. And for basically all those same reasons, remove the knockback of her charge attack, or at least make it less. A lot like someone like Ayaka's, where hers doesn't knock everyone around, it just flinches them. Sure, it may not be as defensive, but it's a lot better for damage in the long run. In the same vein of knockback, we have her elemental burst. The smaller hits of her elemental burst are very prone to knocking small enemies far away, sometimes even out of the final hit of the burst. Admittedly, this is mostly a problem when overload is introduced, but given that we always run characters like Bennett or something, overload is usually always present. So I really don't know if there's a way to address this with Kaching's kit herself. It is, however, a major problem. Sure, it may look cool to see Hilly Turtle flying all over the place. That doesn't mean it's good for a melee character's game plan, though. You want enemies close to you, not flying all over the place. And especially, you don't want a bunch of smaller hits to cause the big hit to miss. Then there is the cast speed of her elemental burst. For a character who has basically 100% uptime on her damage, you know, outside of running out of stamina, her burst sure does take a long time to cast, and I would say even doubling that cast speed wouldn't be unreasonable and it would give her more time to just do her thing. The one saving grace of this is it is time to regen stamina, but as I covered earlier, that's not exactly a good thing. It's just a benefit of our current circumstances. 
let's also shave a little bit of the cast time off the elemental skill. Sure, it's not that bad. It's pretty quick, all things considered, but I do feel like it's a little tiny bit clunky feeling. I also think Kaching's thing is also supposed to be speed, just everything lightning quick speed, and that skill doesn't really convey that. In terms of teleporting instantly across the distance, yeah, thematically that is very quick, but mechanically speaking, the cast speed is a little slow-ish. Now this one honestly has nothing to do with meta or balance. It is not useful, it would just be cool. I would like them to remove the teleport distance of her skill. If you want to cast it, run away about 20 feet back and then cast again, why shouldn't it take you the whole distance? It would just be kind of cool looking. Make the charge attack activated version of her skill do physical damage. It's obviously meant for physical ka because otherwise you would get an electro infusion. So just make it do fizz damage so it actually scales with fizz ka -ching. Fizz ka -ching is what I mean. I always wanted more support for it. After all, she is our best user of Akil Favonia, come at me Chi Chi mains. So I wish her kit, especially her constellations, but more on that later, supported fizz ka -ching more because right now it's more of just a player created thing and not something that ka -ching's kit herself actually encourages you to do. The thunderclap damage, while also just doing physical damage, should do double damage than what it does now. If the elemental burst isn't gonna do physical damage of any kind, then the skill should at least carry the weight of that a little bit more. Now back to Electro again, <sighs> infusion time. It is not a great inconvenience to have that little short downtime, but can we just make it seven and a half to match the cooldown of the skill? Is that so much to ask? What, that, what is the point of that gap? Why is it there? Now the fun part, constellations. Now you see, unlike limited characters, we are all doomed to get a C6 ka -ching. eventually. That goes for all the standard five stars. Sure, it might take years, it might take many years, but we are all eventually gonna get there, and let me tell you, someone who's almost there with ka -ching already, ka -ching's is not worth getting there ever. It sucks. So first up, let's talk of this C1. This thing is just mediocre as shit. Her skill is already such a low portion of her overall damage as is. Adding a little 50% attack scaling that might hit twice sometimes on top of that, that is not a lot. I propose that this C1 either be changed to a very generic, just add an extra charge of her skill, which in combination with the other changes I mentioned earlier would be fine for both Fizz ka -ching and Electro ka -ching. But honestly, eh, maybe that's a little bit too generic and making it so it just does extra slashing damage with the recast version, or Making it so the thunderclap reduces the physical resistance of any targets hit by 30% for 10 seconds would make it a pretty solid constellation without just being a generic add extra one charge. Which again would require the previous changes I suggested earlier to really mean anything. Next up, her super depressing second constellation. Look, unless your damage is abysmally low, and I mean abysmally low for ka -ching standards, not just the game standards, because ka -ching is already doing crap damage, or you're just ignoring supports entirely, ka -ching does not have energy issues, nor does anyone on her team typically if you're building them properly. We can keep the same crappy structure of giving energy back on charge attacks, normal attacks, but I propose adding a line of this constellation that says whenever ka -ching obtains an energy particle through this method, her next two charge attacks afterwards will cost no stamina. Her Personally, I think the best constellations are the ones that alter your playstyle in some way. Ones that just work passively in the background are a lot less exciting, even if they do do something massive, like Raiden C2. And last and definitely least, her constellation 6. This thing is pathetic. 24% electro damage is fine for a very early constellation or a four star. You would think at the very least, if it's not gonna make her do good damage, it could at least do something fun, exciting, change her up a little bit. That's why I propose we add a line to this one as well. I would add a line that reads as follows. While holding maximum stacks, ka -ching's dashes cost no stamina and are twice as fast. Now that might sound a little ridiculous. And to that I say, well, yeah, it's a C6. She may be a standard character, but a C6 five star of any kind is still hard to get. Arguably, ka -ching's might be even harder to get. It's up to RNG, got a one in five chance of getting it. The damage gained from this wouldn't be direct, it's not as obvious as gaining electro percent damage. Given that ka -ching's damage is mostly through her charge attacks and the bulk of her AoE damage comes from her elemental burst, something like this would allow her to dash around the field very quickly, get from target to target, and actually do her relatively single target-ish damage quicker. As it stands right now, it really sucks to have to spend your stamina to dash or sprint over to an enemy, which you're effectively spending your damage to start doing damage quicker, so you really just kinda walk around the field and hope for the best. And not to mention, when you finally get there, you start knocking them back and sending yourself the opposite direction with their charge deck. It's all really a big pain in the ass. It really just makes her design feel very clunky. I mean, sure, it is still fun. It's 
it's not like so bad it's unenjoyable, but you do want better for her if you play her. You can still take her in the abyss. You could still probably get 36 stars, but what you're not telling people is that, yeah, you took Kaching in one side, while the other side is probably stacked with a really strong team. Something like, you know, Ayaka Freeze Comp, which is just absolutely murdering the other side and carrying the dead weight of the Kaching side. Or there's just really broken supports and your Kaching is just stacked with absolutely godly artifacts. Oh, and as a bonus to fix Kaching, we can always wait around for a new artifact set. I personally wouldn't get my hopes up for this. You know, Kaching has two main focuses, electro damage and charge attacks. If you release something that's generic for electro damage, maybe you make other electro characters like Fischl, Raiden, or Beto, who are actually doing okay, a little too strong. You release something for charge attacks, maybe Hu Tao gets a little too strong. There's definitely some kind of way you could make Kaching specifically strong with an artifact set, while maybe not impacting too many other characters, you know, similar to the new Xiao set we just recently got. However, given that she's a standard Vander character and that doesn't really make Hoyoverse much money, I, d I wouldn't count on it. I don't expect even any buffs to ever come to her because why would they? I think we would see buffs to a unit like Klee far before we ever saw a buff to Kaching, but you never know. If you have any ideas to buff Kaching other than, you know, just double her damage or something like that, which, yeah, sure would work, but that's not the most exciting thing, you know, let me know in the comments below. I've definitely seen people with very interesting ideas for Kaching in my time on YouTube so far. You can look at my Discord, Patreon, and all that stuff in the social links below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.